Manchester United 3, Brentford 0 as the curtain and the rain falls down here at Old Trafford. Last game of the season here at home. Two more games on the road against Brighton and Palace to come. Uh, we'll start with the game very, very quickly because it's the end of the season at home. You know what? It's nice to see a routine win. I think we were very composed. I thought we didn't really um, have to play our best football, but we controlled the game. I thought Matic was good. I thought Mata was very good in that number 10 position today. Bruno coming in from the left, that, that, that worked, that worked. Um, and the GOAT, the GOAT Ronaldo just doing GOAT things, just doing GOAT things. Forget the penalty, but, you know, I'll get to that. But just his generic play, just neat and tidy, his work rate, his effort, his attitude, just everything that goes with Ronaldo. And to be fair, that performance against Brentford just continued to sum up his impact and him as a whole. Um, at United, it sums it up, you know, just literally carrying the team, being on the front foot, keeping standards somewhere near high, you know, that's, that's what he's done all game. Um, there was a time when he lost the ball in the first half, he runs like 20, 25 yards, maybe even 30 yards, makes a sliding tackle and yeah, you can say, oh, that's the basics of football, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's about doing the basics right and he always does the basics right. He set up matter a couple of times, the link-up play he had with him and he just looked very, very dangerous and could have easily had a brace today, very narrowly ruled out for offside and his link-up play in general was just very, very good. Alanga gets us off to a good start again. He does something that, again... I've, I've questioned this from Jane Sancho because I want to see it. Again, very, very simple movement. He comes towards the ball and then makes the dart in behind. And to be a good winger in this league, you need to be running in behind when you don't have the ball. You need to give defenders something to think about when, you're, when you don't have the ball at your feet. And jaden has got to add that into his game. I know he's a different type of winger. He is a different type of winger. Um, and we're going to have to play to a different style to get the best out of Jaden on the other side. But it was just something that I noticed. It was just a, when I saw the replay, just a quick come to the ball and spin in behind. And Dalo, I think, gives it to him down the side. And, he, and, he, and again, he caresses it, makes a nice pass for Bruno Tapin. And that's not the first time he's done that this season. There's a couple of quick little you know, bits of movement to get himself in behind and, and make an impact. And we got off to a good start. Um, the second goal comes from the penalty. And again, back to Ronaldo. Um, he, 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 he takes the defender on, gets past him, gives him a nudge as well. You know, Ronaldo at 37. I'm not sure how old the left back is there for, for Brentford, but, you know, definitely not as old as Ronaldo. And it just shows you what he has in his locker. Then he gets brought down, wrong side of him, and, and smashes in the penalty. Um, just, he's just been fantastic all year. And that's, I think moving on to other players, Matic, you know, it was good to see him start the game and obviously get a, a standing ovation when he came off and at the end. But how ironic it is towards the end of these players' tenures, towards the end of the season as well, the players that have been here the longest, the players that have taken arguably the most stick, the players who don't normally play, not the main players, you're talking about Matic, you're talking about Matic, they're the best players. They're, they're, they've, or they've been the best players in the last couple of months, couple of games, should I say. I'm not getting carried away and saying, you know, these, you know, we need to stay and base the team around them. I'm just merely pointing out the fact that it's ironic that the players that are making things tick, the players that are keeping control of the ball, the players that are setting the tone are the players that actually are leaving. You know, it just shows you I've, what I'm, the reason why I'm highlighting it is because it's more indicative as to where Manchester United are right now. The fact that we're saying that Mata and Matic have been the top performers. The 37 year old Ronaldo is the top the performer, the, the 33 year old, 34 year old. I'm not sure exactly how old David De Gea is right now, but been here 10 years plus is the better performer. It's not your new guys. It's not the guys that have been brought in for big money recently. It's the older players. And that just shows where we're at as a football club. Next year, listen, people have been talking about it, getting behind Ten Hag. There's going to be some uncomfortable probably decisions that get made, ones that we may think, mm, not sure about that. You know, some people have had their say on Rashford. Nearly all you guys have had your say on Maguire, what happens with him. But one thing I do agree with, whether we like it or not, whether it's popular or it's unpopular opinion, Ten Hag's got the right to come into this football club and, and see fit how he deems to take this club forward and we have to get behind that from the moment off you know if, if he keeps Maguire as captain I know we might not want to see that but that's what we'll have to get through if, if, if Rashford's there at the start of the season and he's starting left wing or right wing we've got to get behind it it's a clean slate and it'd be interesting to see what he does Marcel spoke about in his fan view about Ten Hag needs to address the fullbacks and I really agree with that it's going to be so interesting to see how much Ten Hag can get out of what we've got B how much he's allowed to get rid of and see what progression he can show. 
you know, versus expectation. We're all going to drop our expectation way down to the ground. And some people will say that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing for this in particular, this season in particular, because we're so far off the top. Forget Manchester City, forget Chelsea, forget Liverpool. Forget that. Forget it. Forget Champions League for a little bit. We've got to focus on building something. And, you know, it's not quite the end of the season, but it basically is, especially here at home. The next time we go inside that stadium, apart from the Legends game that's here in a couple of weeks, will be a whole brand new Manchester United team. Hopefully a new look Manchester United team will be Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United. And it is something to look forward to after an absolutely horrendous season. The only two highlights I can pick up from this season, three highlights maybe, is obviously Ronaldo. Look, we brought him here to win top honours. He said he came here to win. We fell well short. But on a personal, in terms of up, upkeeping your standards and delivering, doing your job and continuing your legacy, Ronaldo's done that. No one can question him. We sometimes questioned him at times. He looked a bit off it. You know, but the mentality to show that he keeps coming back and keeps doing it, he's been fantastic. David De Gea, how many times have we said that in poor seasons where he's been a standout player? He's been great. Um, and I think Alanga's been a good story this season. You know, the fact that he's managed to break through, don't get me wrong, it hasn't been that hard for him to start games because Rashford's been playing so, so poorly. He's almost made Ralph Rannick's mind up, but he's done the basics right and he's, he's, he's taken his opportunity. That's, that's a bit of a bright light. We would have loved to have seen more youngsters played this season, but in such a turbulent season, I guess, you, you know, managers change and it probably wasn't fair to put those youngsters in. Um, I get that. I really do get that. But, you know... From Oli to Michael Carrick to Ralph Ranick, it's all coming to an end now. As it, as, and the rain here and the cold is very fitting to just sum up our season, really. We haven't really had rain, me and Josh were saying this, in a lot of, of, of these recordings after the games. And the way I feel right now, I'm getting quite cold. This just sums up the season. There's only a couple of glimmers of light. But we've lit a new candle in Eric Ten Hag and hopefully he can take us forward. But it's going to take so much patience, guys. And I, and I say that with me included. We're so emotionally invested into this club. We love this football club and we want to see it come back to the top. But, you know, it says it there, Manchester United. I think the key there is, is being united. We have to be united as a fan base. We have to be united as, um, as fans and the players need to be united. But that needs to come from them upstairs allowing Eric Ten Hag to build this squad and we have to get behind it from minute one right through to the right through to tough times next season there are going to be times next season where it's awful there are going to be times next season I believe anyway hope I'm wrong but you know where we're on a bad run of form we can't buy a win we're not looking great there's going to be times because I honestly think there's going to be a lot more players here that we think are part of the Deadwood or we agree that are part of the Deadwood that are still going to be here we have to accept that but we've got to get behind Eric Tenner my player of the season has to be Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, I know there's a couple of games left, but he's just been superhuman. My man of the match tonight was Cristiano Ronaldo as well. Smash the like on the video, subscribe if you guys are new, and I will see you at the next game. Peace.